a lot of stuff goes on on cruise ships. Sex. English isn't my first language. Hey sailors and welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy and today I wanted to go through things that are actually terrifying when you are joining a cruise ship to work on it. That I haven't really spoke about before. You know, we've gone through what to expect on your first day, on your first embarkation day, what's going to happen. But actually the anxieties and the worries that you have on your first day we haven't gone through that so today in this video i wanted to go through things that us crew members get nervous about before we actually join so cr joining a cruise ship is nerve-wracking as hell for obvious reasons you're going to live on a ship which you've probably never done before most of you will have never even seen a cruise ship in real life before so it's a lot but i wanted to go through some specific things that Basically, everyone is worried about when they first join a cruise ship to work. So that if you are joining a cruise ship in the near future, you will know that the things you are nervous about and the anxieties that you have are completely normal. And there's basically no need to be worried about it, even though you will be because it's normal, it's all gonna be fine. So some of the concerns that I'm gonna mention were my own, they were the ones that I had. Some of them are what other people have told me they ex so this is a mixture of probably about 10 crew members fears and concerns when they first joined a cruise ship and it was really interesting actually seeing what you know maybe i was scared about something that someone else wasn't and vice versa so i hope this video is helpful to you and i hope you enjoy it my first major concern about going to live and work on a cruise ship was not packing the right things like what if I forget my hairbrush or conditioner or what if I forget a pair of trousers? Like, oh my God, I'm gonna be on a boat or a ship. How am I gonna survive? But what I failed to remember is that pretty much every day, this ship that you are on is going to be docked in a city, a town where they have shops. So yes, it is obviously inconvenient if you do forget your hairbrush or your shampoo but it is not the end of the world because you will be able to buy one from one of the ports you are in because it's very unlikely that the ship you are on is only going to be going to destinations where there's no shops like even if you do a Caribbean itinerary where most of the ports are just beaches you're probably going to leave from Miami where there are shops so don't stress too much about making sure everything is packed like if you forget something you will be able to buy it you'll probably be able to buy it on board the ship so yes i know packing is stressful but it becomes so much more stressful when we put a lot of pressure on it because we think if we forget something it's going to be the end of the world so to make that process a whole lot less stressful if you forget some if you forget one thing if you forget 20 things it doesn't matter you will be able to repurchase it. The second thing, now this was something that I was really worried about. It's probably gonna sound a bit daft when I say it, but it was knowing where to get on the ship. So if you're joining a cruise ship, you're obviously aware that they are huge. Like even the small cruise ships are huge when you're stood beneath them. So I was like, how am I gonna know where to actually get on the ship? Because before you join a cruise ship, if you've never been on a cruise, it's like, am I going to be the only new crew member joining? Am I going to be one of a hundred crew members joining? Like, I honestly thought that I would be the only new crew member joining. When I first flew from Steiner to Royal Caribbean in Australia, I was like, oh my God, it's just going to be me. Maybe they're going to confuse me for one of the passengers. What's going to happen? Oh, no, no, no. So basically every embarkation day, there's people who finish their contract and people who join their contract. You will, I guarantee that you will not be the only crew member joining that cruise ship on that day. There are going to be people who work in the port. They have nothing to do with the cruise line. They just work in the port. The best thing that you can do is just say to one of them, I'm a crew member where do I go? And they will have been told by the cruise line, passengers go here, crew members go here. If in doubt, ask someone and they will give you the answer. And if they don't know it, someone will know the answer. And they're most likely going to point you in the direction of the ship or of the area where crew members go, where you will most likely be met by 
a, a member of the medical team on board who is going to go through your medical certificates with you and get you to sign a form that basically says you're fit and healthy. But do not worry about where to get on the ship. Like, as soon as you get to the port, it will be made obvious. But I was, that was something that I was like really stressed about. But the next thing that I personally didn't, wasn't really bothered about, but one of my colleagues was, he was like handing over all of your documents. So you've been directed where to embark the ship. You're met by a member of the medical team. They go through all your documents with you, but then they're like, okay, so hand over your passport, hand over your medical, hand over your SCCW, and they just take it away. And he was like, it just felt so alien because your instinct is like, don't give a stranger your passport. Like, I mean, you just don't do that. And then of course there are all these like other certificates that you've potentially paid up to £2,000 for. All of this incredibly important paperwork you're just giving to someone you've just met. And you just trust that that's the right person. And he was like, I really had a hard time with that. I was like, no, I, I, I don't want to give you my passport. I don't want to give you uh, my medical that I paid £300 for. I don't want to, you know, everyone does it. As a crew member, your passport is stored in the crew office on board that cruise ship. So I currently do not have my passport. It is in crew office. Of course, I have access to it at any time. If I go to crew office and I request my passport, for whatever reason, maybe I need to fill out a form. I can have it and then I'll give it back and then obviously at the end of my contract I get it to go home. The same with my medical, my medical is stored in the medical facility and then when I get off the ship because I finish my contract I will have my medical back. So these documents are being taken away to be stored safely, um, however I do know what he meant like to, to hand over all these documents that you've paid so much money for to someone you've just met is, is a very, is very weird, it just doesn't compute. The next thing that is nerve-wracking is meeting your cabin mate. Most likely, if you're starting a position on a cruise ship, you will be sharing a cabin. So it's like, is my cabin mate going to be grumpy? Are they going to be happy? Are they going to be welcoming? Are they going to hate me because I'm moving into their space? It is honestly terrifying meeting your cabin mate because you are going to meet this person and you are going to be living with them for potentially the next few months. It's very rare that like, your contracts line up evenly. They probably started their contract a few months before you, so you maybe have three or four months with them. But that's a long time to live with someone who you've never met before. You know, it's like, are they clean? Are they really messy? Do they smell? It's very rare in any other situation that you would just be thrust into this position where you have to live with a complete stranger, most likely from the other side of the world. And then in terms of the cabin, it's like, am I top bunk or bottom bunk? Will I be able to fit all of my clothes into the cabin? Will I have enough coat hangers? Like, there are just so many questions when it comes to the cabin and your cabin mate. And after speaking to everyone and just thinking about myself, like, that is the most nerve-wracking thing about starting a cruise ship. It's not work, it's not anything else, it is who the hell am I going to be living with? And sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's not so good. If you haven't watched my roommate videos, then uh, I'll link them down below and uh, or up here, and you can have a watch because I've had some good ones, I've had some bad ones. And honestly, there's nothing I can really say to get rid of this concern, unlike the other ones I've mentioned. Most likely they will be welcoming and they won't be an asshole. You'll deal with it. like. If they're messy, if they're smelly, if they annoy you, if you can't understand each other, like, you will cross that bridge when you come to it. So there's really no point, even though you will, but there's no point worrying about it because whatever trials and tribulations come, you will deal with it and you will be fine. And then work. You have to start your job. So obviously for the last year, the case has been that you join a cruise ship and you immediately go into quarantine for like five to ten days depending on the cruise line. However, now that it's all dying down, thank the Lord, you won't have to do quarantine. Now the procedure is that you can just come on and get straight to work. And that is how it was before the pandemic. 
you would get on, move into your cabin, and at lunchtime that same day, you would start your first shift. That's nerve wracking, like you've got to meet a whole team of people that you're going to be working with. You've got to meet your manager, like is your manager going to be nice? Of course you're going to make mistakes, you're new, everyone makes mistakes, but how is your team going to react to you making mistakes? It's really hard because if you are on land and you start a new job, you still have the comfort of having your friendship group, your parents, like everything else stays the same. The only thing that changes is your job. Whereas when you go on a cruise ship, you have to deal with all the stress of starting a new job. But also, I'm now living with a stranger in a, in a cabin on a ship. Like there's just so much change at once that it is a lot to take in and it is a bit overwhelming. So this is why hopefully your team is going to be welcoming and honestly nine times out of ten they will be because everyone remembers what it was like to first start their cruise ship contract it was terrifying best thing you'll ever do but it is scary but the team of people you work with are usually very welcoming and you know you become the fast friends of course there are going to be people that you don't like that don't like you you're not going to get on with everybody i've tried it doesn't work you've just got to be yourself and accept that you're going to win some and you're going to lose some the next concern again this wasn't really one of mine but a friend of mine and she was like getting lost i was so worried about getting lost and i got lost all the time and i was like well yeah everyone does you've moved on to a cruise ship and especially if you've never been on a cruise ship before you have no idea how things are laid out you will very quickly learn the route from your cabin to the mess where you eat and your route from the cabin to work but for a lot of people they only know that for like two or three weeks because they never like venture anywhere else so Obviously not on in your first week, because if it's your first contract on your first ever cruise ship, you're already going to have tons of information to take in. But the sooner you can just have a little walk around the cruise ship in your lunch break or you have some time off, the better. Like, just try and get your bearings, because as soon as you get your bearings, uh, you will start to feel a lot more comfortable like immediately but yeah like getting lost is absolutely part of the process of starting a contract on a cruise ship I don't know one person that hasn't got lost I mean on my first ship I had to leave my cabin at 8 30 to get to work at 9 because it took me half an hour to get to work even though the route once I knew it took maybe six minutes but just in case I was like I just need to leave myself some time in case I get lost. Another concern which was actually a really good one is English isn't my first language. Obviously English is my first language, this is someone else's concern, but very relevant as most of you watching this and most people who are joining cruise ships, English isn't their first language. You know, that they're concerned, will people be able to understand them? Is their English good enough for being on board the ship? But I've had it in previous contracts where girls or, and, and guys have joined a team, whether it's the spa or shops, and their English has been quite, I'm not going to say poor, I, I really don't feel like I can say that because I don't speak a second language and I really do, if, if you know, people who can speak a second language or a third or a fourth, I just think it's incredible, so I'm never going to sit here and say their second language was poor, but it wasn't, it wasn't strong, <laughs> I don't know. So they would be really, really quiet at the start of their contract, but you could see as their English developed, they came more and more out of their shell and by like, a few, you know, a few months into their contract, they were sprightly and talking to everyone and that was really, really beautiful to see, like to see them develop. But I mean, the only thing I would say is, firstly, if anyone says anything to you about like your English not being strong enough, Firstly, does that person speak a second language? Because if they don't, you can tell them to go and themselves. If it's like from a manager and they're genuinely like, this is constructive criticism, like for your job, your English needs to improve. Your English will improve on a cruise ship. Like they always say to learn a language, the best way is to submerge yourself 
in that. If you want to learn Spanish, go to Spain. If you want to learn English, go on a cruise ship. <laughs> you will have to speak English all the time. So your English will improve at a, a dramatic rate. So don't worry if you're going on a cruise ship and you're like, oh my God, I don't know if my English is that good. After a few months of being on board, it'll be amazing because you have no choice other than to pick it up. And if you already know the basics, which I'm sure you will because you wouldn't be able to get a job on a cruise ship if you don't, you'll be fine. And also, and also there's people from all over the world on cruise ships. There is going to be someone of your nationality on board. So if you are struggling with the English and you do just want to have a conversation to someone in your native tongue, there will be someone who you can have a conversation with in your native tongue. Um, you know, like on this ship, there's over 54 nationalities, which is crazy. But that's the nature of cruise ships. Seasickness. So one of my friends, before he came on board, he was like, I was genuinely worried that I was just going to be continuously seasick. Like as soon as the ship set sail, I was going to be seasick. But genuine concern. And I'm sure you will get seasick at some point, um, especially when you first join and you're not really used to the movement. Like, so I'm sure you will experience it at some point and it's, it's rubbish. But these cruise ships are generally so big that you can't even feel the water beneath you. Like, Right now, we are at sea, and you absolutely wouldn't know. It's not like I'm sat here swaying from side to side. Very, very little movement. So, most likely, you are not going to be seasick um, all the time. This was an interesting one, and it is sex. So, I think it's kind of well known that a lot of stuff goes on on cruise ships, and it's all kind of incestuous in a weird way because when you live in a small town there's only a certain amount of people so you know friends end up hooking up with friends who then end up going with the other friend and that's like cruise ships ultimately there is only a certain number of people to choose from so things are going to cross over at certain points so my friend was really worried about catching something like an sti or an std because he was like is it are they just rife like well firstly when um you have your medical done to work on a cruise ship i would say 80 percent of medicals test you for uh, sexually transmitted infections and diseases so actually in that sense it's quite safe because the majority of people who work on a cruise ship have been tested for something and if they have something then they will know about it and they will have gotten rid of it or they will be living with it but they'll know about it so i'm gonna say no in that sense like you don't need to come on here and be worried about um catching something i mean it's like anything though isn't it like you just use contraception um to protect yourself but the only thing i would say when it comes to like sleeping around and getting boyfriends or girlfriends just give it some time because it, having worked on ships for many years <laughs> I, I have seen some uh, some situations arise that you just wouldn't believe. And I would just really recommend getting on board and for the first two weeks, just abstain. Just don't get in anyone's knickers because after two weeks, you will know kind of what the dynamics are with certain people. You'll know like if they're together, if they're not together, if the person you fancy is single or not single because you know when you're first on board especially if you're a girl you will have people message you and you know because you're fresh meat so you'll get a lot of attention and if you've never experienced that before um it is it's flattering it's overwhelming on my first contract i was like oh my god this is amazing but it, it happens to everyone and the people trying with you are also trying with every new girl that comes on board, most likely. So just give it a minute, understand the dynamics that are going on on that cruise ship that you were on, and then you can make an informed decision of who you go with. Because a lot of the dramatic situations that arise, there's usually a new joiner involved. Like, honestly, because they come on, they wanna have fun, they do have fun, but by doing that, they also get involved in a dynamic that they didn't even know existed, but now it's too late to 
because I've already done the deed. So that's my advice. You're not necessarily going to catch an STI because you're going to use protection, um, but you might get yourself into some drama. So just give it a week or so, give it a few weeks so you know actually what you're getting yourself into. I think this is my favourite concern, it just made me chuckle, um, but it is a legitimate concern. My friend was worried that there was going to be emergencies like all the time. So before starting your cruise ship contract, the only thing that you have done prior is probably your STCW course, which is where you do firefighting, you learn about sea survival skills, uh, looking out for pirates and security awareness. You watch a lot of videos of cruise ships that have sunk, so like the Costa Concordia, you will study that a lot. And you know, there's a few princess or a princess ship that went up in flames, and, you know, all this horrendous stuff. So after doing that, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be putting out fires left, right and center. I'm gonna be checking for pirates. I'm gonna have my life jacket on every two minutes. Maybe if I'm lucky, the ship will only sink twice in my contract. And yes, I realized that this might sound a bit silly, but it actually, yeah, it makes sense because they do, obviously they're doing it to make you aware and so you know what to look out for, but it does kind of put the fear of God up you because you're like, Am I, hang on, why am I doing firefighting? Like, am I the firefighting team on board? Am I gonna be the first response if there's a fire on board? No, you're not. Unless you are an officer, uh, no. If you're just going to be like a housekeeper or a shop assistant or spa staff or something, you are not gonna be the number one person they call in a firefighting. Can you imagine, like, you're doing a massage and they're like, we need you, there's a fire on deck six. Um, no. But it is important that everyone knows how to work a fire extinguisher, how to deal with a fire, because although you might not be first response if there is a fire or an emergency, you might be the only one there when it happens. And also, passengers don't see designated crew in an emergency situation, they just see crew. And even if you're a hairdresser, they are going to ask you questions as if you are the firefighter or the captain. You know what I'm trying to say. So it is important that you know all of the information, but most likely you, as a new joiner on a cruise ship, will not be part of the initial firefighting team. And then the last one, and by far the most common one, is the social side, being there alone making friends but you know most likely you're going on a cruise ship which is going to have between 700 to 1500 crew members there is going to be someone that you like and someone that likes you and all you need is just one person that you get on with if you don't get on with anyone that you work with if you don't like your manager but you have one person who works in a different department to you that you get on great with that's all you need and try not to look at it as scary try to look at it as exciting like you're gonna meet all of these new people you're gonna learn so much you're gonna develop as a person because they're gonna teach you so much and yes it is scary but like you're you're gonna make friends unless you are an absolute dick you'll be fine and you will make a friend if not seven you know and it, I, I always come back to like everyone goes on board a cruise ship on their own so really everyone is alone together which means that everyone is open to making friends because that's one of the best parts about working on a cruise ship. So it is scary, but it is also very exciting. But anyway, so there is my list of concerns and things that me and my fellow crew members were anxious about before we joined cruise ships. If you have any concerns that I did not mention in this video, please leave them in the comments. And uh, I, I mean, I, to be honest, I'd just be interested to see them, but also I will try and calm you down if I can. But the only advice I can give you is like, just take it step by step. Like if you're thinking of all these things, together going to work on a cruise ship is just going to seem so incredibly overwhelming but if you take it step by step like deal with handing over your medical and your passport when you get to that deal with meeting your roommate when you get to that like there's no point worrying about things that you can't do anything about and these are things that you can't do anything about until you're actually in the situation so there's literally no point worrying about it no point stressing because it will all be fine Every single one of the things that I have mentioned are gonna be fine. 
But yes, I hope you have found this video helpful. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I actually really enjoyed filming it. And uh, yeah, any questions, leave them in the comments and I will see you in the next video. But thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic evening. Bye guys.